Hey everybody, thanks for coming fishing with me today. Now before we get started, uh, I want everybody to look at that clock up there. It's 1.47 p.m. And by the time that clock says 2.47 p.m., you're going to see me catch 19 fish. And you can see my jigs coming down over there. They're highlighted in yellow. That bottom dot that you see in that highlight, that's my jig. And the top dot is a weight that I have above my jig. That's kind of my standard setup. Um, is a weight in the jig. You can see me going for that bottom fish. He didn't want it. So I'm going to go for the top one now. There he is. We got him. Now, this is the, that's a pretty classic example of catching an open water crappie uh, with live scope right there. And that's, it, man, it's, there's not much more fun to do in the winter time than go out and catch a load of crappie. Um, using this new techno it is a blast and like i said 19 fish in an hour is what we're about to see here and so this this video is actually a continuation of my last video it's the last half and you can see my my jigs dropping down right over there a little further cast that was out like 35 feet but you can see those crappie underneath hovering i guarantee you that's what i'm trying to drop on yeah here we go so you can see me dropping going for this big mark and they weren't all biting today. I'd say one in six or eight would bite. Oh, there he is. But there's just so many marks out there <laughs> that if the first few don't bite, you're going to have, you know, 20 more chances. And so almost every single cast was a fish. It was rare to have two or three casts where I didn't catch one. That's a big fish. Uh, and like I said, so this is a continuation of my last video. I only put the first, you know, I don't know, half the day, which on that day, the only, you know, I only put the first hour or two in that last video, <clears throat> and this is the last hour, um, which was the best hour. I mean, 19 fish in an hour. I don't know where you guys are from, or but 19 fish in an hour for me is probably the best I've ever done in a single hour. That it was just nonstop, and like you can watch that clock up there. It's just one after the other as soon as i'd get my jig reset and back in the water i was catching another fish uh, you can see i missed my first few targets so now i'm going back under this tree um, and trying to pull some of these fish out from under there oh you can see i spooked one he ran off or swam off but usually if i spook one and there's more fish i'll get a hook up anyway because it kind of there you saw it kind of stirs the rest of them up they don't know if that fish is spooked or if he's chasing bait. So then they get in hunting mode. They're like, oh, wait, somebody's eating something. Let me get in active mode and feed. And, you know, as soon as they see the jig, they'll smack it. Is That's what I've observed, at least, um, watching this thing. It seems like if, if there's a cluster of fish and one spooks, the others are more likely to bite. <clears throat> um, yeah, this was a really fun day on the... Oh missed him <laughs> but look I'm not gonna reel it back up because there's still you know 30 fish right there anyway I spooked one he swam down uh, which ah uh, you know that one that I spooked yeah I think he's the one that swam up after it kind of spooked him he went down and prepped for an ambush. he you know he didn't like it coming down close to him but whenever he realized it was probably bait he swam down, set up that ambush, and came up and smacked it. That's a big fish. I could, <laughs> you could hear that one taking out drag as I pulled him up. <laughs> that was a, that was a good fish. Oh, this was a perfect day. I don't like Darbon. Look, the water's just like glass. You know, it's a, it was a slight breeze so that it kept you in good, you know, good position, but just very slight, maybe two miles an hour. That water was just smooth as could be um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll kind of talk through some of the uh, this one's chasing uh, he's not chasing like he really wants it though he's doing that follow thing that a lot of them do They'll follow pause follow pause I, yep he's not going to commit no nope. And then he spooked whenever it came down too fast. Yep, so back under this tree again, where 
a lot of them are. One came up and looked at it. Oh, that small one shot up out of there. I guarantee you what I was doing there, that bigger mark that was up higher, I was actually reeling up to try and get that bigger mark up there. But then this little guy shot out after it like a bullet. <laughs> and he, he wound up getting it. But he goes back. That was a, a very small crappie. So I'm going to try and talk through some of the, the basic stuff. I know a lot of you guys are, you know, you've used this thing a lot and you know what you're doing. But for the, the newer guys, I'm going to talk through some of the more um, kind of the, the basic stuff um, with live scope and how I'm fishing it and things I'm doing because, you know, I've been using this thing for a while now and I know, um, you know, it, it looks a little simple on here and it's probably not as simple when you get out on the water. So I'll, I'll talk through what I'm doing. Um, the One of the biggest things I see from folks that come out for the first time using this, you see how I'm... It's staying in the beam. I'm not really having to fiddle with the beam right now or any of that. Um, is oh look that one he got it. It was a slow hookup. It was uh, those are hard to feel like when <laughs> whenever one bites it like that. But so one of the the biggest things I notice when folks come out for the first time is um, pole tip uh, moving outside of the beam. And when I say beam, I mean that's that's where oh, that bird came down. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that up on that screen. That bird swooped down and got him some bait right there. But uh, I love being on the water. It's just, you know, you never know what you're going to see. We have eagles and all kinds of stuff out here on Darbone that it's just a blast to come out and, you know, just be out here. Even if fish weren't biting, it's just, you know, it's nice being out on the water. Oh, there's a big fish. He's coming up. Got him. Oh, that's not a crappie. Yeah, you can tell as soon as you hook into one of these that you see how he's fighting like crazy. That is a that's a freshwater drum, and you, <laughs> he's whenever you hook into one, you know you've got one. And so you, I can tell right now. I guarantee you, I'm just muttering under my breath like ah, I'm gonna have to, <laughs> gonna have to get this thing off the hook and get all slimy. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, there he is. I, you know, it's, it wouldn't be so bad. And there he goes back in the water. I, I should have held him up, but uh, I was probably ready to go back to catching him since they were on fire right now. Um, and so, I'm sorry, going back, talking about the beam. Um, you'll hear live scope guys talk about the beam a lot. And so, uh, whenever you have live scope put on a pole, you see me reaching up and touching that pole right there. That is the, uh, the transducer pole. And so... Oh, here, 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 that's a big fish. And so wherever that transducer is aimed, that's the slice of the water you can see. And when I say slice of water, I mean a very thin slice of water, like a 20 degree part of a cone. Uh, I'm sorry, 20 degree part of a, a circle. If you imagine you're, you're sitting in a circle, 20 degrees of that circle goes out in front of you. And so it starts out real thin and it gets wider as it goes out. But uh, the biggest thing is if if you move your fishing pole tip away from that beam where that transducer is aimed, you can no longer see your jig. That's a big fish. Uh, you can. He had some weight. You could see. Yeah, I'm standing up like oh, I'm gonna have to ease this one in. <laughs> and I I see it a lot with uh, with newer folks that are using live scope. They'll they'll move their pole left or right, kind of out of the beam after they've made their cast or their pitch whenever you do that your your jig your line immediately starts pulling outside the beam and so once you can see your jigs once you can see your lure um, keep your pole tip in that beam don't move the don't move the pole tip you can move your pole up and down to adjust um, you know the, the the depth but don't move it left or right because if you do you're gonna pull yourself out of the beam. You won't be able to see your, oh, I lost that fish. That was a good one too. So that, I could have had 20 in an hour. If I could have had a nice even number. If I'd caught that one, that would have been 20. Um, but I missed him. I, I, the hook pulled out, uh, tore off of his, his lip. And so just, uh, it, you know, if you're newer, make, just try to practice that make sure you keep you know after you make your pitch um 
keep that pole tip right, you know, in line with wherever the transducer is aimed. Keep it right in that line, kind of like you're uh, you're aiming right at the tip of your pole, and um, you know you'll all, you'll still be able to see your jig throughout. <clears throat> I see that a lot um, with folks that come out. You know, they'll move it left or right and get themselves out of the beam where they can't see the the lure anymore. So that's one big one big thing to make sure you do. Lots of big ones. Man, it's just, I mean, you guys, it, I can't, you know, you, you've all probably been out fishing when they're on fire like this. And for me, this was probably the most on fire that I've, I've ever fished them. Um, I mean, 19, almost 20 in a, oh, that one, <laughs> you got a little smack on the way up. It, it was just incredible. This is a, a beautiful, like perfect day for crappie fishing. Um, it was a kind of magic out there. I, I, I'm missing this kind of weather. We've had it really cold here lately, so I'm I'm looking forward to getting out again soon and going to chase some more. Oh, I did not set that hook quick enough, and he got loose. But look what's right under there. Another one. <laughs> so <laughs> that that is the kind of day this was right there. Miss one fish on the hook set drops right down on top of another fish because if you look at that screen there are crappie everywhere like that you know everywhere on the screen there's just look at that i mean one tenth of this is what i normally target you know on a on a good day and you're talking just there's just fish everywhere and i love winter winter crappie fishing because you know every there he goes <laughs> There he goes. Got him. Every fish in the lake, you know, just goes out to the, the deepest parts of the lake is usually how it works. Um, and so you, you go from, you know, springtime crappie fishing's awesome in its own right, but the fish scatter, right? So you have to cover all this bank, you know, and all this shallow water to find them. And you can usually find a lot, but out here in the wintertime, they're just in the deep water. And, and now that we have all this new tech, you can go out here and every fish in the lake is in like, you know, 2% two per, two of the lake. And so you go to that 2% and here they are all clustered together, hanging out and eating as much as they can to get ready for, uh, for springtime. And there's just said, but you could see um, what I talked about, about one in every six or eight fish is actually, you know, would bite readily. And so I went past, what, one, two, three, four, five fish right there and did not, they didn't react at all. But that sixth one did. <clears throat> and so I, I think if I hadn't, you know, gotten on the fish like this where there's so many, I probably wouldn't have had such a good day because, you know, not, you know, not that many fish were, were biting. But it's just the fact that there were so many fish here that it just looks like, you know, they're all biting, but... Really, it's probably one in six or one in eight. That fish is way up high. He is 16 feet deep as opposed to a lot of the other. Yeah, there he is. Those that are shallower, they are, they're feeding. They're coming up that high looking for those bait fish that are, that are higher. And I, I think I mentioned it in my last video. Also, this was the day after. I think I caught like 30 something, 34, 35 fish or something on this day. Um, most of which were in this hour. But this was the day after. I took my brother out here and he and I caught 100 fish. That's a two man limit on Lake Darbone. And we caught 100 fish um, in a day. That's the first time we've ever gotten a two man limit out here. Um, it, 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 was, it was unreal. It was a day just like this. The day before, you know, the day before this video was filmed, it was just like this, and and we got a hundred. Um, he said it's he said his freezer was getting empty, and so we we filled it up just about I think in that one day. And you know, at the time I was like, oh, we can't do that too much. We're gonna you know catch too many fish. This was probably the last few great days of fishing uh, before we had all the freezes and bad weather and everything. And I don't think I've been crappie fishing maybe but once since this day 
Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of glad now that we, we did fish all we, all we did back then because the weather has not been cooperating lately. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back out here again and doing it, doing it again. Oh, that's a, that's a good one right there too. The fish were all perfect size. So they were all like, almost every fish was 10 or 11 inches, um, which is perfect, right? Because out here on Lake Darbone, they have the regulations where you can only keep um, seven fish that are 12 inches or more. Oh, I missed him. This is another one of those, isn't it? Where, yep, I missed that first fish. So let's just drop down to one of these other 50 fish that's right under me also and <laughs> see if one of them wants to bite it. And yep, there we go. Man, it's 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 wild how you know tight crappie will pack in together like that. Like that one blob down there where I pulled that one off of. If you look at it, it looks like you know one big mass of a fish, but I think it's actually like three or four, and they're just right on top of each other. Um, they, you know, crappie don't need personal space, not like a bass or or other fish does. Yeah, but uh, my brother and I still talk about that that day. I, we'll probably be talking about these days for a long time. I don't know how many more you know, days like this you, you know you get in your life. It, this was uh, these were pretty magic. But I'm looking forward to going out again soon. Um, I think my next trips out are going to be chasing some largemouth uh, bass, and then I've got some. Uh, I've got some saltwater stuff coming up too. I haven't put any of those videos out yet, but uh, like I say all the time, I that's a that's a good one. I'm a fishing nut. I, I fish everywhere for everything. It doesn't matter, um, you know. It, it, me and my my brother and I, when we were kids, we'd fish in you know drainage ditches. If we had, we were always fishing for something somewhere, um, and that still still holds true today that was a big one but hopefully I, uh, I get lucky with some bass I, I I'm gonna be honest with you I am not a good bass fisherman um, I'm trying to get better but I, I <laughs> I'm not great usually I catch bass incidentally it's just you know I'll be out crappie fishing and catch a few bass um, just by chance but when I go out targeting them I have a much harder time and my success rate is not great, but um, that was a big... So I lost sight of it right there. You guys saw that. I lost sight of it, but I knew I was still right on top of all those fish. I think the boat had shifted um, slightly, and so I kind of couldn't see my jig anymore. But I just kept on reeling. One of them smacked it. It looked like a couple of them tried to. They were competing over it. But but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm much more of a crappie fisherman or you know catfish that kind of things but bass i'm i'm gonna i aim to get better at bass fishing this year um and i'm like i said i have a saltwater trip coming up that should be uh very very good i aim to to show you guys some views of saltwater fishing that you may not have ever seen before um it, they won't be live scope videos uh, we're gonna do something different but you'll still get to to see a lot more um, that you don't normally get to see. So I'm really excited about those. And hopefully the, the filming goes good whenever, <laughs> when, I, when I go out and weather cooperates and everything. We'll, we'll see soon. I think this might be the last fish. Yes, I think it is. So I think that's the end of the hour. Look, 2.47 p.m. Look at that clock up there. It's 2.47 and we got 19 fish uh, in an hour. That was almost 20. I missed that one right at the boat, so <laughs> that would have made it 20. But that was a, a lot of fun fishing right there. Well, thank you all for coming fishing with me. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching, and I will see you all again soon. Bye, everybody.